Here's some exercises my chiropractor showed me to fix some neck pain and shoulder pain associated with my slap tear. So I had slap tears, uh, I think it was four years ago now, four or five years ago, they were both, I had one in each shoulder and they were both a year apart. And so I am fixed, I'm rehabilitated, but a slap tear never fully heals, so it's always gonna be there and you just need to be as strong and flexible as you can in the joint so that you can do the things that you wanna do. But a part of what I experience is that I periodically get a really stiff neck and really um, stiff back, and that's also related to other issues. But when I go to the chiropractor and they adjust me, um, I get immediate relief with my shoulder pain. It's incredible. And I went yesterday, and these are some of the exercises that my chiropractor gave me to do. So I'm about to do them before my workout, so I thought I'd share them with you. And a funny thing is that like in the later stages of slap tear rehab, for me, what I'm working on now is really getting the finer points of how I can move my arm without dysfunctional movement in the shoulder. Because what happens is after a slap tear, your scapula stabilizes and your rotator cuff, they stop doing their job properly. And the, you start like when you want to abduct the arm and you want to raise it high enough, you get to a point where pain kicks in. And so the upper traps and the levator scapula kick in and move the shoulder up this way instead of the way it's meant to move, which is that it just comes up like this with the collarbone and the scapula not really elevating too much. And that just causes overuse injuries in muscles that don't need to be used the way that you're using them now when you're doing your strength training and handstands and things like that. And it just causes a cascade of problems. So this is just a bunch of stuff that I now do <clears throat> most days. I, I wouldn't say I'll do it every day, but I do it most days to, to really help to overcome this. And I'm continually, I won't say surprised, I'm not surprised anymore, but I'm continually impressed with how good a result I get when I go to the chiropractor you know, for this slap tear and they adjust my back and all of a sudden I can move better. And I'm like, oh, wow, there's no, there's no pain in my shoulder. So um, I've been going to chiropractors for decades now and I had a great chiropractor in Sydney um, called Tom Cartwright at Cartwright Physical Therapy in North Sydney. But then when I moved to the Central Coast, I had to find a new chiropractor and the, uh, you know, I don't go back for repeat visits to chiropractors or physical therapists that aren't great. That said, a really good sports physio can also give you incredible results as well. It's more about the practitioner. Anyway, so here we go. I'm gonna grab my dowel rod like this and we're going as high as we can. So this is an exercise that I'd never done before yesterday and uh, it makes sense to me. So I'm gonna sit on my bench and then I'm going to turn as far as I possibly can. And you should have seen how much less movement I had yesterday when I did this. And now I'm gonna take a deep breath and then exhale. I can go that little bit further and really like I'm actively pulling myself as far as I possibly can into this rotation. Another deep breath. <sighs> Try and go further. When you exhale. Ah oh, man, I was I, I had so much less rotation yesterday when I went to the chiropractor, but at the start of the session. Alright, now we go this way. Deep breath. I don't think we do enough rotation in the movement world, in exercise training generally in the spine. And so, you know, this is something that you really want to keep developing. We do, I do spine mobility and spine rotation in our, uh, in my training, but this is, this is doing it a little bit differently. So I'm going to do one more to my uh, not so good side. This was the side that I was really struggling on so I go as far as I can deep breath and then and this is like anything you do it if you do it regularly you're going to get a good result from it and I love doing exercises like this as part of my warm-up because it's active it's not passive I'm actively using my muscles to create range of motion so it's not a passive stretch which means it's good to do before strength training Okay, the next one, I'm going to turn my head to the side and then look up and hold for 10 breaths. And I love this one for several reasons. Uh, but, you know, the main one is that it's really, it's offsetting so much of the forward, you know, the flexion of the spine that we do when we're sitting at our desks or looking at our phones. Like, we spend so much of our time these days in this position that doing this exercise is something that it's really just there to help offset that. So turning to the side, looking back as far as you can, 
<clears throat> and you'd just be like, it's, it's funny to even have to say this, but to say that everything in the body is connected is, is an understatement. I mean, look at us. We, we are one body, you know, the shoulder is connected to the neck bone and the neck bone's connected. <laughs> no, but it is, you know, you it's all, it's all connected, you know, so shoulder issues, we need to look at what's going on in the neck and in the upper back and the mid back and even in the lower back, you know. Okay, and now the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to lean down as far as I can to the side, as far as I can go, and I'm going to hold for 10 breaths. And now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to lean my elbow on the bench and then I'm going to lean back as far as I can go as well. And when my chiropractor does this to me, she's really like pulling me back into this position. If you've never been to a good chiropractor before, personally, I highly recommend it. I get great results from it. I've got um, issues in my spine that when you look at on, a, on an MRI or a CT scan, which I've had both of, it doesn't look good. You know, I've got a bilateral pars fracture in L4, L5. I've got spondylolisthesis in the same joint. I've got spondylosis in the same joint. So spondylolisthesis is where the, the vertebrae have slipped and one of them is posteriorly placed, so that causes a wicked anterior pelvic tilt. Spondylosis is degenerative joint disease. So the joint, the disc in that um, joint is just completely worn away. It's almost bone on bone with my vertebra. And then I've also got spondylosis in my cervical spine, up in my neck. And so when you look at me on an x-ray, I look like somebody that shouldn't be able to do what I can do. I look like somebody that, you know, should be in a lot of pain. And, you know, when I came up and I met this new chiropractor for the first time and she looked at my scans and just went, wow. Like she asked me all these questions about my pain and said, how often are you in pain? And I told her and she just couldn't believe it. She said, wow, well, normally with people that have conditions like what you've got, I need to see them like several times a week for it. And, um, but it's because I go to the chiropractor periodically. I'm starting to go more regularly now again that I've found a good one. And it's because I do this stuff, you know, I do this stuff daily and I don't just take it for granted that our bodies are going to move the way that we want it to move. Okay. The next exercise, this one's really specific for my slap tear. And what I'm going to be doing is because we all have this dysfunction after a slap tear where when we raise, you'll get to a point where your body starts to do that to raise the shoulder and that's dysfunctional. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting my hand on my collarbone, okay? And then, and it's a good idea to do the good arm first and to feel what it feels like when you just raise your shoulder up and you feel how the collarbone barely lifts, only really right at the end does the collarbone start to come up a bit. And then on your bad side, you wanna be aware of when the collarbone starts to raise and then the work is to really keep the shoulder down, so keep the shoulder blade depressed, <clears throat> keep the collarbone down and then try to just raise up without the collarbone elevating which it's basically without the scapula elevating but the, you'll feel the collarbone raise when the scapula starts to elevate and so what you what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to rebuild the correct movement pattern to remind myself of the way that the shoulder wants to move. And in my shoulder rehab program, you know, if you're somebody that's got a slap tear and you're really desperate to avoid surgery and you want to fix it up, come and join the UMS online coaching and I'll write you a custom program based on the rehab programs that were written for me by exceptional sports physiotherapists when I had my slap tears and got me back to full function without surgery. And so there are exercises, a whole series of exercises that we use to help with this stuff 
because obviously when you're when you're in the earlier phases of a slap tear you won't be able to lift your arm like what i'm doing here it's way too painful so this is later later on stuff that i'm doing you know this is in the more advanced phases but yeah there we go hopefully it's, i can still feel that dysfunction it's interesting anyway hopefully you learned something there hopefully i was able to share something valuable for you if you've got any questions about my experience with chiropractors, my experience with slap tears, what I do for my training, any of it, let me know, hit me up in the comments, I'll answer them for you. Share this video with anybody that you think might like it and watch one of those videos if you like this and you wanna learn more and I'll see you in my next video. Have a great day.